So now we're going to talk about a little bit more complicated topic, and that is what happens in the presence of subtrees now that we, instead of just having three nodes present, if we have lots more nodes present, what happens to those subtrees? That's basically the last thing we need to discuss to finish off AVL trees. So let's look at that for a second. And we're back. Now you can see I've got a much bigger tree on my hands. I've got the three nodes, A, B, and C, that are going to be rotated. But now you can see that each of them has another subtree hanging off of them. Here the triangle is meant to represent an entire subtree. This is not a single node. That's an entire tree under there. Likewise, the B has a right subtree as well. And the C has an entire left and a right subtree. A, B, and C are the three nodes that are going to be rotated. What type of rotation are we going to do here? We're going to do an LL rotation. So we're going to rotate to fix an LL imbalance. So now we have to rotate the tree. So what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that we're going to have a nail drawn right in there. And I'm going to grab this node, and I'm going to pull it, and I'm going to adjust the tree. Now, when I do that, some of these subtrees, it will not be clear where they land. And that's the last thing I need you to understand about AVL, and then we're basically kind of done. So to understand that, let's draw the parts that we do know. So we're going to have, what is going to be our new root node once we do the thing here? OK, Mr. Sorry, go ahead, sir. It's going to be B here, and it's going to be A here, and it's going to be C here. And now, let's take the easy cases. So here for C, you can see that we have this left and right subtree. What do you think happens to the left and right subtree of C after the rotation? Yes, sir? They still uh, stay there. They stay there, so that's going to be easy. So CL and CR are going to be untouched by the rotation. What do you think happens to A sub R? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Ben. It stays uh, as the right. OK, so it stays here, A sub R. So now the only question is, what happens to B sub R? You can see that B sub R can't stay at B sub R because B sub R's location has now been overtaken by this new node A. So the question is, what happens to B sub R? Now, right now, it should be obvious what happens to B sub R because there's only one place for it to go, and that's right here. But I need to explain to you why this is OK and doesn't violate any of the properties of the binary search tree. Let's look at B sub R for a second and tell your partner what is true about every single element in B sub R. What are the two things that we can say mathematically about all the elements of B sub R? greater than b and less than a. Let's write those down. b sub r is greater than b, and b sub r is less than a. You agree, right? It's to the left of a and to the right of b. Now let's look over here. Are these two properties preserved when we moved b sub r from being the right subtree of b to being the left subtree of a? Take a look here and see if this is true here or not. It's still to the right of B and to the left of A. You see that, right? OK. So you can see that in this scenario, the properties of the binary search tree have been preserved. So that is why, even if other subtrees exist here, we only do rotations on three nodes. Only do rotations on three nodes. Now, it turns out that there are four rotations we need to consider, LL, RR, LR, and RL. And what I've done on that board right there is I've shown you what happens when they all are fully populated with subtrees. You can see in the first case, if I have an LL imbalance and I have these subtrees, after it's finished, the only one that moves needs to trans uh, to translate somewhere else is this third one, this third tree, and it becomes the left child here. I would take a picture of this uh, board if I were you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you discuss that board for just a few minutes to make sure you understand it.